I had a connection with a really nice studio in, in Austin. It was, you know, 24 tracks and nice, but still, you know, going into Amigo Studios and, and Warner, at Warner Brothers where, I mean, when I did my first few albums, uh, first couple albums, I mean, Randy Newman was always across the hall most of the time, and so was Ricky Lee, uh, the Doobies, you know, so uh, Michael McDonald. So there was always all these luminaries around. So that was exciting, I mean, to be... You know, there's two studios there, A and E, and it's always exciting to sort of be at the candy machine and just you know run into Randy Newman, and um, so it was very very exciting. And we used our band and Michael Lamartian, who's a brilliant pianist who produced, we played piano, grand piano, and so we just kind of made our demos actually are not that different than the than the original record with the flamingo on it. Uh, Lamartian did play some great uh, grand piano, and he did uh, did some beautiful string arrangements, but the intrinsic arrangements of the songs are not different. So we had kind of done some quality demos. You know, some people just theorize, you know, punk and disco had run its course, and we came out with a pop record just at the right time. But it was very, very exciting, I mean, to be in the studio with El Marty and all his legendary stories about Steely Dan and his connection to them. And as that time went on, you know, I met, um, I, had, I had known Don Henley because Henley's from Texas. And so Don was a friend prior to the record being made, but Don offered to sing some backgrounds and did, in, did in fact, um, sing on two tracks, and he brought J.D. Souther with him to, to sing the other part, so I got to be J.D. Um, Michael O'Marty, and because of his connection with Steely Dan, got Larry Carlton to play guitar on the record, which was a real thrill. I was a fan of Valerie Carter's, so I asked Lenny Warnock if he could ask Valerie to sing on something. I sent her the tune she liked it. Nikki Larson, Nicola Larson, rest her soul, was next door recording. She came over to hear Say It Be Mine and said, this would be a great duet, so she stood on a box, and we did that. Um... Eric Johnson, who was from Austin, a dear friend of mine, we've been friends since 13, I really wanted to feature him because he was undiscovered. No one knew how amazingly brilliant he is, so he played on a track at the end. And then Mike McDonald was a friend of Omardian's, also through Steely Dan, and, and Omardian invited Michael down one night to hear what he was doing with this kid from Texas. So McDonald came down with his two golden retrievers, and they kind of ran around, and Michael listened to what we were doing. We were doing I really don't know anymore that night. And Michael said, I really like this. He said, you know, if you want some vocals, let me know. So we stuck a mic in his face and he sang that tune. And then a few weeks later, we were doing Ride Like the Wind and said, you know, he'd sound great on this. And so we got him to come down and do that as well. And I, I really believe that Mike's voice on Ride Like the Wind really gave me that edge at radio because people were intrigued by, well, they were a little intrigued by all the luminaries on the record, but I think particularly Mike, you know, had Radio Zero at that point. So it was a big, big cachet to have him on the record. Well, and then, you know, Marty, and for all, he brought a lot of the people in, but then again, he was just as amazed by Hindley because Don doesn't sing on hardly anything, but it was that old Texas, you know, uh, relationship loyalty that, that happened that Don just said, you know, if you get a deal and get something going, let me know, and I'll do some backgrounds. And to his, to his credit, you know, when I called him and asked him to do, do it, he, he did it, you know, and so that was a huge feather in my cap, too, because to have somebody like Hindley, not just with his fame, but with his, you know, sort of unquestionable credibility. Henley's one of those artists who's like an artist artist who, you know, people just have immense respect for. So all that lent a lot of credibility to the record to where radio, R&R, &R, and all those people just kind of took a look at it because it's like, wow, well, if Henley and McDonald and all these people are on it, maybe it must be something. So it was a great. It was, it was fun and very exciting for me, you know. And so uh, it was, um, and then, you know, second record, it was a little easier then. But, you know, I had Carla Bonoff do a duet, who I was a big fan of. I had um, Artie, Artie Garfunkel sang a duet with me. Carl Wilson then did a bunch of vocals. And so, you know, it was, uh, it was fun. Mm -hmm. 